Hey makers and welcome to another video. For those who have been following me on my Instagram account and my Facebook page, they know that I built this CNC machine. Videos on how to make it will be available soon on my YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe for more upcoming videos. Now as a little twist, I decided to go with 5 motors instead of 3 motor configuration. I have 2 motors on the X, 2 motors on the Y, and a motor on the Z. My CNC contains 2 types of motors. The small ones that you can find in normal 3D printers like the Prusa printers which is small and a slightly larger motor that you can find on a bigger machines like the CR10S from Creality. So I've been wondering how much torque exactly does each motor provides? If I go on the internet and search NEMA 70 motors I can find a lot of models and each of them come with a different holding torque. Now I do believe that the larger the stepper motor is, the more torque it has, but a friend of mine said it, that's probably the bearing that's inside of it that is making it large. Now I don't believe that a manufacturer will invest more on a stepper motor without actually improving its performance. I mean torque. So today we will find out if we get any additional benefits in the torque area from using a larger stepper motor. For this test, I'll be using these stepper motors and a calibrated weight that are actually M10 nuts that weights exactly 10 grams and my DIY bench power supply along with the multimeter to correctly set the amperes since the small digital meter inside my power supply is damaged and its value are basically crap. We will be measuring the torque using this 3D printer part that I made so the working principle is simple. The distance between the weight and the motor will be exactly 10 cm and depending how much grams the motor can hold we will know exactly how much torque each motor has. Now the units will be Newton per millimeter. I'll be putting my multimeter on the amps measuring function to set up exactly 1.7 amps. First we need to figure out the coil wires. You see this is a bipolar stepper motor that has two coils inside of it. Each coil has two terminals so it has two wires. So in total we have two coils and four wires. Now we need to identify which of the wires belongs to which coil. For that it's pretty simple. So take two wires, does no matter what the color is, and tie them together and try to turn the motor. If you feel the resistance, it means that those coils connect to the same coil. You see, when you turn the motor, you're actually generating current through the coil. And as we all know, if you generate current inside the coil, the coil will generate current in the reverse direction. And this is what makes turning it very hard. Now, if you don't feel any resistance, try a different pair of colors. For this application, we need a constant current source. You see, the maximum torque we get from the motor is when there is 1.7 amps running through the coil. Of course, this is different from each type of motor, like for example, on a bigger motors like the NEMA 23, we need more than 1.7 amps. It can even reach 4 amps. That's why we need a bigger motor driver, but this is beyond the scope of this video. Now, I don't have a constant current source, but what I do have is an adjustable power supply that has both adjustable voltage and current limiting function. So, to stimulate a constant current source, what I will be doing is I will turn the voltage all the way up and I will keep increasing the current limiting function until I get to the desired current that I need. Now, no matter how much load I put on the motor, it's not going to draw any more current than the limit that I've set, which is 1.7 amp. So, in this case, I emulated a constant current source. As far as the test goes, it's pretty straightforward. After connecting the motor to the power, connect the 3D printer part to the shaft of the motor and keep adding weight until the motor fails. Now make sure you hold the motor secure, for that I used a hammer and basically whatever I found at my disposal. I can't say that my holding work is perfect, but it will do the job. Now I kept adding weights to the motor until it failed. Then I measured out the weight and this is the results. We get 340 grams. And since we use a 10 centimeter shaft to get the torque, we need to divide this weight by 10. 
So the torque that we are getting out of this motor is 0.314 Nm, which is less than the advertised 0.4 Nm. Now using the same method, I test both the large motors, and their results were identical. And this is the weight that both of them managed to hold, 350 grams, which means their Holden torque is 0.35 Nm. With this, we can conclude that in this case, a larger motor provides more torque. Now, I can't really say that this applies to every type of stepper motor that you can find, but if you can get a good deal on a big motor, go ahead. And if you really want to be sure, you can try this simple setup and test the torque yourself. General rule of thumbs, the more torque you have on your CNC, the better its performance will be. So who knows, maybe I will be using NEMA 23 in the future instead of the NEMA 17. Since one NEMA 23 theoretically have more than 1.5 Nm, which is already more than 4 times that of the NEMA 17. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Peace.